Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to use Stripe to collect online payments. Stripe is a powerful payment processing platform that enables businesses to accept payments securely and seamlessly. With its user-friendly interface, robust features and extensive documentation, Stripe is an excellent choice for beginners and experienced users alike. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the process of setting up Stripe, creating a product and accepting payments with ease. Before we do that, let's take a quick look at the pricing. So you can see here the rate is 1.5% plus 20p for UK cards and 2.5% plus 20p for EU cards. And then if we go down here, we've got more details and information about international cards, which have slightly higher fees. But let's get started with setting up an account. Head over to stripe.com and click start now. And you're gonna to need to create an account with your email, select your country and create a password. When you're done, click create account. You then have to verify your account. So go ahead and head over to your inbox and click the verification link. When you click the verification link, you'll be taken to this page and you're gonna to need to fill in your business profile to start accepting payments. So click activate payments. You're then gonna to need to select your business location and the type of business from these drop down menus and then click continue. You'll then need to enter your personal details, including your name, email, date of birth and home address. When you've entered all of that, click continue again. If you've got a VAT number, you can enter that here and select your industry from the drop down menu, or you can use the search bar. If you've got a website, you can enter that here. If you don't have a website, you can use a social media link instead. And then you've got to include a description of the type of products you sell. Once you've done all that, click continue. And then it says, describe how you fulfill your orders. On average, how long after paying will your customer typically receive their goods? And then you've got a drop down menu with a few options. Just click whatever is relevant to you and then click continue. You can now add public details for your customers. So you can add a statement descriptor. This is what will show up in the bank statement when they make a payment to you. You can see the example on the right hand side here. So it's probably a good idea to put your business name here. And then you've got a shortened descriptor, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a shorter descriptor for the bank statement. And then you can add a customer support phone number. When you've done all that, click continue. Now you've got to add your bank details so that you can receive payments. So you're going to need to select your currency, the country of your bank, and then enter the bank details, including the sort code and the account number. You've now got to set up two step authentication. You can use an app add a security key or use a text message. So just select whichever is your preference and verify your account. Next, you have to select your product category. You can choose from digital products, physical products or services. So select whichever one is most relevant to your business. Each of those categories has a lot of subcategories to choose from. So you can also search in the search bar if that is easier. Once you've selected your product category, click continue. You'll then need to review all of the details you've already entered and click agree and submit. It's then going to take you to your dashboard and here you can choose how to start collecting payments. We've got quite a few options here from sharing a link to a checkout page to charging customers in person. But today we're going to look at sharing a link to a checkout page. So let's click create a payment link. Here you're going to create a checkout page and you've got a preview here on the right hand side so you can see what it's going to look like to your customers. At the top of the page, you can select a type. You've got a choice between products or subscriptions, or you've got customers choose what to pay. So this will be used for tipping, donations or pay what you want. We're going to choose products. You can then add a new product from this drop down menu. We're going to name the product and then add a description of the product. Then you've got your product tax category. This is the same as before. You can choose between digital, physical or services. You can then set the price of your product and change the currency from this drop down menu. And you can decide whether or not to include tax in the price. And you can also add additional currencies if that's something you want to do. Then you've got the option of having this as a one time payment or a recurring payment if you wanted to set this up as a subscription service and then you can choose how often to bill a customer. And then up at the top on the right hand corner, you can upload an image to go with your product. When you're happy with everything, click add product in the bottom right hand corner. 
You can see it's updated the preview to show you how your new product will look. You've then got some options underneath here. You can collect tax, automatically collect your customers' addresses. You can require customers to provide a phone number. You can also add custom fields to the checkout. So up here you can see label name, that's the custom field that I've just added. That would be useful if you needed to collect information for custom orders. In the advanced options, you can allow promo codes, allow business customers to provide tax IDs, and save payment details for future use. Finally, at the bottom, you can choose what call to action you want to display on the button. You can choose between pay, book, or donate. If you go back up to the top, you can see here you've got an after payment option, and that's going to show you your confirmation page. You can choose whether or not to show a confirmation page. You can show this standard confirmation page, or you can send your customers to a web address after they've completed their purchase. You can also choose to create an invoice PDF as well. In the preview tab, you also have an option up here to see what your checkout page looks like on the mobile. You can also see that for the payment page as well as the confirmation page. When you're happy with everything, in the top right hand corner, click Create Link. This is now going to take you to your payments link page. So you can see up here you've got your payment link. So let's copy that open a new tab and see what your page looks like. You can see here, it looks exactly like the preview we saw before. So you can start sending this link out to your customers and start collecting payments. You can also grab a QR code that people can scan to buy the product, or you can get a buy button as well. So you've got a code here that you can integrate into your website and you can choose whether to have that display as a card or a button. You can see what they look like in the preview tab on the right. And you've got a few options you can customize, like the button text, you can show supported payment methods, and you've also got a few styling options here. So you can change the background, the button color, the font and the border style so that it matches with your website. When you're happy, click save changes and copy code, and you can then head over to your website and integrate that button or card into your website to start collecting payments from your customers. And there you have it. We've reached the end of our Stripe tutorial. I hope you found this guide helpful and gained a clear understanding of how to use Stripe to collect payments online.